Welcome back. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with a big problem that you might have already faced when building custom GPT applications. And that is, how do we personalize the GPT application to each user? So most GPT applications, like this one here, um, from all trails, work fine without logging in. Um, for example, here you can simply provide your location and ask it to find hiking routes in your area. And this is enough for most applications. But what if you want your GPT to do something more complicated, like track your past routes, provide recommendation based on hike you liked in the past? And to do that, what you essentially have to do is, is to create a profile for each user and to be able to track their preference and provide recommendations based on that. And so what we're going to essentially do today is we're going to use open authentication from Google to essentially log users into ChatGPT application. And if you were to go to um, this page where you can create custom GPTs, so we're going to go back here, you can create custom GPTs. And in the configuration settings, um, when you try to create a new action, what you have is this ability to log in, log in a user using open authentication. And what this allows us to do is essentially create a, um, a user account for our API endpoints, and then personalize the recommendations to each users. And that's what we're going to do today in this video is to set up open authentication so that we can use that to log in users in our ChatGPT applications. All right, so in order to make it really easy to for users to log into their GPT application, we're going to actually use this thing called open authorization or OAuth. And what OAuth allows us to do is to use existing accounts like Google to easily authenticate or authorize a user without accessing their password details. And if you want to learn more about OAuth, you can just simply go to Wikipedia. We will be using the most recent version of the OAuth standard, and that is the OAuth 2.0. Um, so let's get started. All right, first we need to go to Google Cloud Console. Um, um, once you're in your Google Cloud Console, what you can do is you can create a new project. Um, you can call this project name O uh, uh, Demo. And for this, uh, you can either select an organization or you can just select no organization. All right, once we have created a new project, what we need to do is we need to set up the OAuth consent screen. So to do that, you can click on API and services and then go to OAuth consent screen, or you can simply just search on the search bar OAuth consent screen and you're gonna to get to the same page. Uh, because we want users outside of our organization or anyone to log in, anyone with a Google account to log in, we can just select user type as external and hit create. We can give a name for this application. We're going to call O Auth Demo App. I mean, you, this app could be your, you know, name of your ChatGPT application. Uh, the email that this uh, this app is associated with. You can provide other things like the logo and application homepage, but we're going to ignore that for now because it's not strictly required. Um, and then you can uh, provide the developer contact information. And hit continue. Um, the scope defines what what things the third party application can access from your Google account. Um, in this case, we're going to keep it pretty high level, so we're just going to create email um, and yeah. In this case, we're only going to access the user email, so um, we can just update and uh, say there are no sensitive scopes uh, that we're going to access when we're trying to log in the user. We're just going to use their email. Um, and then because we're kind of in this testing phase, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just add a couple of users uh, so that we can use them to test our app.
All right, so just to summarize, we are going to create an OAuth consent screen that allows anyone to access this app, um, and we're able to access their email. All right. So we can go back to... Now that we have completed creating OAuth consent screen, what we need to do is set up some credentials, and this is the credentials for our API endpoints. So let's create credentials. And what we want is OAuth client ID. And, and if you remember, um, when if we were to use this authorization screen on our GPT application, we need to provide client, we need to provide client ID and client secret, and this is what we're gonna create here. So we're gonna create the credentials that allows this GPT application to uh, authenticate using this Google OAuth, right? So all right, so once we have specified the the name, the 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 URL that hosts our web application, basically the API endpoint, and then a API endpoint that will be redirected once uh, once you go through Google's authentication, we can hit create to create this um, OAuth client ID. Now, what what this is going to provide you is um, both the client ID and the client secret that we're going to use to um, we're going to use in our application and download this as JSON for for future use uh, to to authenticate our application. All right, what we're going to do today is create a custom API endpoint and test that we can use the OAuth that we just created earlier to log in. To or authentication this application. Um, Rep, Replit makes it really easy to uh, deploy a web application, and we're going to build a really simple custom API endpoint that basically says hello and the person's email, and then we're going to deploy that and then uh, authenticate the user. So to begin, let's start by creating a REPL. We're going to use uh, Python to create our API endpoint, and we're going to name this uh, OAuth Demo Crush. Right, and if you haven't used Replit, Replit is just, uh, think of it just as an IDE. Um, you can do things like you know, write a Python program to print hello world and just run it and it should just print hello world. Um, Replit also makes it really easy to automatically download various Python libraries. All right, so first what I've done is I've created a really simple Flask app. We're gonna run this and make sure that um, a really simple API endpoint, which is this test, and then hello works. The test is to test to make sure that the app is working, and the hello is to make sure that the authentication is working. So let's run this. All right, it's gonna. It says, you know, there's no secret key. Okay, we can uh, we can go to. Um, Secrets, and then create a new secret, and under secret key, let's just provide anything here. We'll just say uh, this is just for the um, Flask app for uh, authentication. Um, so now we can try to run it again. All right, so you can see that there's uh, that you can see a web link, and if we were to do it, it's okay. Um, we can now test this API endpoint. You can see that the API endpoint is working, and if you were to see hello, um, you can see your email is it doesn't know the email, so it says no user logged in. So this is great. All right, now that the the um, the test and the hello API endpoints are, are working. We need to add the authentication, um, the OAuth. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the AuthLive package um, from Flask um, to set that up. So we're going to use Google as an authentication. Um, we're going to we have some uh, client ID that we're going to provide, and then. Um, this is the access token URL. We're going to get authorization token URL. 
and uh, we also wrote two um, API endpoints, one to log in, which redirects the user to basically authorize, right? And, um, and we don't need to do these. Um, we also don't need to print the token. Um, and yeah, and let's see if this uh, works. So if you were to try to run this app, what happens is you probably end up getting some errors. Um, and their error says module request not found. So I can just go here and do All right, let's try it again. All right, it says we don't have any cl client ID. That's perfect because that's something that we uh, downloaded earlier uh, from our uh, Google um, Web Console. So let's let's go to secrets and let's create a new secret called. client ID, and we're going to paste that client ID that we downloaded earlier. All right, so I've copied and pasted both the client ID and client secret, which we're going to access uh, from the environment variables here on our app, and then that's what that's what's going to allow us to, to authenticate um, using Google. All right, let's go back here and try to rerun the app. All right. So things are working fine. So now if I were to open here and try to test um, that works. Hello shouldn't because the user is not logged in. Now if I were to try to log in the user, all right, at least it goes to this page that redirects it to the sign up page. But you can see that it says error redirect URI mismatch. And why is that happening? That's happening because if you look at our um, the URL that we used, that is not the same URL that we set up in our OAuth earlier. If you go back to this um, client ID for our web application, we see that the uh, authorized origin for our API is this OAuth-GPT-POS. So we need to deploy our um, application to see that the authentication actually works. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So now that it seems like everything is working, we're going to deploy our application, which in this case is really easy. Using Replit, you can just hit deploy. We'll just use auto scale, set up our deployment. Um, we're going to use just one machine because we don't. This is a very simple API endpoint. Um, we can change this to something else. So, so OAuth GPT crush. Yeah, this is what we used, and let's try to deploy it. All right, the app has finished deploying, and we're gonna we're gonna test the login right now. All right, now that we have deployed our application, let's test it. Um, so if we do test the API endpoint, okay, that API endpoint is working. And if I were to now do hello, okay, we're now logged in. That makes sense. And let's try to log in. Hmm. It says access block. This app's request is invalid. User can't sign in because there's an invalid request. Again, it says redirect URI mismatch. So if you look at the error details, it says the redirect URI is, it, URI is, is this, right? So maybe this is something we haven't added. So let's take a look. So if you go back to our credentials um, and look at the URIs, I think we need to also add this particular one. It's just uh, the one just the HTTP version. Um, 
let's try that. And we're going to save this. Next, what we're going to do is go back here and try to test it again. So test works. Um, hello. Doesn't work. And then if you were to try to log in. There you go. So now it says choose an account to continue with the Replit app. Um, and it tells you where it's going to be redirected to if I were to log in. So if I were to, so I'm just going to use my current uh, Google account. If I were to use my Google account, it says, okay, your this app has been verified. There's a whole thing. Uh, there's a thing we can do to kind of verify our app, but we're going to just continue. And um, by continuing, it will prompt you to make sure that you're sharing certain information. In this case, we're just sharing email. And it's going to redirect us to hello and says your email is this. So so this is how we can use OAuth to um, authenticate the user. All right, so stay tuned for the next video where we're going to use this OAuth to create a, a custom GPT that remembers your preferences and the history and everything. So, and if you like today's video, please like and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you.